Okay, so mm -hmm. hi, welcome everybody. Welcome to another episode of Minds and the Music. I am so thrilled to have Julie in front of me and we will be talking about healing and how that can help you beat overwhelm um, as a DJ producer um, and just in general as a person working in dance music. Hi, Julie. Hello, Eileen. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm so, Excellent. so happy that you're here. Um, me too. Yeah, I really can't wait to dive into this conversation. <laughs> so let's just do it. Like, let's just start with okay. an introduction. Just tell everybody who you are, where you're from, and maybe also share like one little thing that not many people know about you. That could be fun. <laughs> mm. Okay. All right. So my name is Julie. As you know, um, I am a spiritual healer stroke energy healer. Um, historically, I'm a musician, a singer. Um, but what I didn't realize in the past was that music in itself was healing. So basically, I al already had and always had this healing capability. Uh, but I guess that it was kind of like um, a gift, can we say, um, that I wasn't aware of and that I needed to be utilizing. So therefore, life decided to throw, I guess, one or two um, obstacles along my path just in order to wake me up basically. Um, so my time and my journey in the music industry was quite tumultuous as it is for many people. Um, so it just got to a stage where there were a few situations which basically propelled me more down a spiritual path, um, basically as a means to help myself. And in the end, I ended up um, having to learn how to heal myself and certain elements and things that were going on. Um, so basically, yeah, that's what threw me onto the healing path. And as I say, it was always a capability that I had, but I didn't know that it was there. Um, so once it became apparent that, okay, it was there, um, I then knew that I had to basically train in healing in order to be able to help other people. Um, so I did that. And basically, that is what I do now. So yeah, that's me. <laughs> awesome. And what about like one thing that don't not many people know about you something like quirky or fun or whatever? Ooh, <laughs> something that people don't know about me. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's like one of, one. one of one of yeah is like um I used to volunteer for six months in a yeah. horse shelter in Tuscany. I worked yeah. like, with horses for six months uh -huh. and, and mistreated horses. And not many people know that about me. I I I mean I share mm. with many people that I used to live in Italy and I used to yes. live in Tuscany, but people yeah. don't really know what I actually did there. So it's yeah. not like it's a secret, but it's kind of like something not many people know about me. That's, that's yeah. <laughs> um, gosh, what don't people know about me? I think they know most things, but then I guess people would say, no, we don't know anything about you. You're quite mysterious. Uh, hmm. Maybe that's, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm mysterious. <laughs> there we and go. I have, and I have lived in Italy for a while as well. So there you go. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> really great oh. so um how did we meet let's tell that story i like that story. yeah so basically um you've been posting on a facebook group called no normal not novelty um for a few years now so i always saw your post and i thought ah i should reach out to this young lady at some stage um but at the time for me i was still i guess going through one of my hopefully the last major lesson um that i had to go through so it wasn't quite the right timing. Um, I was still working at the time. So basically, one of the things with music is, as we all know, you don't really make a full time living. So I've always had to work, well, have a nine to five, basically. Um, so I was just doing life um, at that stage. But yeah, I was always seeing your post and thought I should reach out at some time. Um, I started my healing qualification, my studies in 2015 and qualified in 2017. Um, but because I was still working at that stage, and not only that, I was hoping to start a new music project, basically. So um, I haven't actually, so I still consider myself to be a musician. Um, it's not something that I've left behind, um, but it's just been circumstantial that I haven't been able to do it in recent years, basically, only because the last projects that I did were just so horrific so the next time when I do do a new project it has to be you know under different circumstances I need to 
basically have full control. Um, but for that, I need money and I didn't have the money at, this, at the time. Um, so when I got my healing qualification, I was still working, um, but still of the mindset that, you know, music would be my first priority. Um, but just the way that life pans out, that didn't happen. Um, my day job ended a year ago and that's when I thought, okay, well, maybe now's the time to get healing off the ground once and for all. Um, so basically that's what I've been doing ever, ever since. So, um, it happens that I guess the stars were fully aligned with that. So things have just been falling into place one after the other. Um, so yes, here we have it. <laughs> now I'm healing. <laughs> Yes, that's really awesome. Yeah, I remember, I don't know how it went exactly. I think you like maybe liked a post or something on my Instagram page at some point, yeah. like a month ago. And Yeah, so basically, um, I did another course over the last year. Mm -hmm. um, so I was busy with that. So not pushing so heavily with my heal healing practice as such. Um, so, the, well, the course was supposed to be um, a fast track it should only have taken four months but because of the pandemic um, everything just got delayed um, I was doing aromatherapy massage so obviously you need to massage people and touch them um, yeah. so we weren't able to do that element of the course until September mm -hmm. of last year um, well for a little bit before we went back into lockdown again um, but anyway that's what I have been doing over the last year so I wasn't really pushing so much with the healing I've been studying. Um, so basically around a month ago, that's when I got all of my kind of like um, social media for my business in place. So I always had a website, um, but because I wasn't doing it full time, I didn't bother with social media. Mm -hmm. So I got that in place um, a month ago. So that's when I came looking for you. And yes, <laughs> I liked your post. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. And from there on, I think this is a beautiful example of how like authentic networking works, yeah, absolutely. you know, like how it can be really genuine. And yeah. I just saw your, your feed and I was like, oh my God, I love this feed. Like, <laughs> I don't know what it was. It was just, you know, I believe that energy speaks louder than words. And sure, it was probably sure. that for me that spoke to me. Yeah. And I just reached out to you and I was like, girl, we have to talk. <laughs> you and, and I have talked. to talk. Yeah. <laughs> and we did. <laughs> we sure did. Yes. And now we're here. And I really thought like, you know, you would be a great guest to come on my show because, you. you know, for people who have been listening for a yeah. while, it's third year running now. Sure. They know that I love to really explore many alternative yeah. ways of, you know, enhancing and activating your mental well-being in dance yes. music. And I also love to present people with things that I have tried and tested out somehow myself or okay. put people in front of people that I believe that like this is this is somebody that you just have to know and have to hear about. Yeah. Um, and so this is why I love doing these interviews. And I just thought you would be, you know, the perfect fit for this. Thank you. Um, and also because you know, we, you and I have been talking about this a little bit mm. already, but um, some of the things that well, I think mostly what I help my clients with DJs and producers with yeah. is I help them through overwhelm. Okay. Yeah. And they come to me with something entirely different. And I, I, I always call it the three P's procrastination, pressure and or mm -hmm. perfectionism. Okay. But those are actually symptoms of a deeper lying issue. And yes. usually that kind of pans down to overwhelm, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so this is kind of something that I wanted to explore with you today, okay. um, which is also the topic of the show, yes. how to beat overwhelm as a DJ yeah. through healing. Yes. So I would love to dive a little bit deeper into that. Yeah. Like, what are your views in general um, of like feeling overwhelmed mm -hmm. as a person, let's say? What, what, what is going on um, there when people come to you and they're feeling overwhelmed? Like uh -huh. what is going on there in your view? Okay, so firstly, let's try and explain what healing is. Briefly. <laughs> okay, so um, healing as a therapy, um, it's an energetic therapy. Um, so basically, out of all of the complementary therapies that you see out there, um, healing is normally at the top of the ladder. So basically, unlike other therapies that only treat the symptoms, healing does tackle the root cause. And although we're not allowed to claim to make, uh, although we're not allowed to, you know, make any claims to cure, on many occasions, healing does remediate the issue in full. Um, so it's an energetic therapy. Um, how does it work? So 
us as humans were massive balls of energy, were energy beings. Um, we all know that, you know, the brain produces um, electric signals. So we have, you know, EEG machines that can read the brain waves. Um, so basically, it's not only the brain where, you know, electricity and energy is, it's our whole being. Um, we have an energy field. So basically, within our body, we have seven chakras. So some of you out there may have heard of the chakras. Um, and basically, what the chakras do is that they pull energy in from outside in the universe, in the atmosphere. So basically, we feed off the energy in the, in the atmosphere. So our chakras pull the energy in through the back, um, and then they release energy as well from out the front. So basically, the chakras control our organs and our behavior. They control everything about us. So when we get ill, the illness will first manifest in our energetic body. So in the energy field and in our chakras, that's where it, that's where it will first emerge before eventually seeping through to the physical body. And by the time it does seep into the physical body, that's when you know, we have an illness that's already manifested. Um, so basically healing is the antidote basically to remediating illness. Um, so illness at its roots will always be, well, most of the time, it will always be in one of the chakras. Um, so as an example, if somebody has issues, you know, with their bones and their skeleton, that would be an issue with their base chakra, um, which could be blocked or out of balance. Um, if somebody has, say, reproductive issues, say if it's a lady, um, then that would be your sacral chakra. Um, if you're suffering from depression or anything to do with the brain, that would be your crown chakra. So energetically, um, healing is basically undoing the programming that has caused that disease to manifest in the first place. Um, so not only is it controlling, you know, your physical organs, but it controls your emotions and your behavior. Um, so the chakras themselves, they're like hard drives. So they store and they record all of our trauma and, you know, emotions. Um, so when we do have issues, basically, it's because of those trapped emotions and trapped trauma that's in the chakras. So therefore, the, anti the antidote to that would be energy healing in order to, you know, erase that. Um, well, it, a lot of it is program, programming, negative programming. So the healing kind of like just erases that negative programming. Um, so if people are overwhelmed, suffering with things like procrastination, again, that would be an emotion that is residing in, you know, one of the relevant chakras. So the healing would erase that. Um, on, an, on an energetic level, what it is doing is opening up your intuitive brain, your right brain. Um, so it puts you into an alpha mode. Um, and basically when the brain is in an alpha mode, it's more receptive to programming. So when I'm healing somebody, um, basically I'm just projecting an intention onto them as to what needs to be done. Um, so maybe if somebody is procrastinating, um, then I will focus my intention on them, you know, obviously for the procrastination to end and just basically work on the reprogramming. So healing can be very good at reprogramming brain patterning, basically. Yeah. So tell a little bit more about the alpha um, state, because for people yeah. who, don't know, who don't really know what that is, that is something yes. that we can easily invoke ourselves. That, that's a state that yeah. is very familiar to us. But for people who don't know, let's yeah. talk a little bit more about what that, what that actually means. Yeah, sure. So basically, we carry out most of our normal day-to-day -day activities in the left brain, which is the logical brain. So that's cool. Um, but where's my data that I have? Ba -ba 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 -ba. I did have some figures. There we are. So basically, in our left brain, um, it's capable of processing 2000 bits per second. But if you can open up the right brain, that's capable of processing 400 billion bits. Yep, 400 billion bits per second, basically. So your right brain is your intuitive brain. It's the subconscious. And it's the side of the brain that basically connects us to 
you know, the universal energy. Um, and when you're in your right brain, basically you're just more susceptible. Um, so if you're in a state of meditation, you'll be in an alpha brain state. So rather than just meditating for the sake of relaxation, when you're in that state, um, it's better to make better use of that time and, you know, do some programming, whether it's I am affirmations, mm -hmm. but, you know, yeah, that's when you need to reprogram the brain when you're in an alpha brain state. And it, it's a bit like, I guess, manifestation and the law of attraction as well. So when you're in that state and you do that programming, then that's when you can change patternings from happening. Yeah. And really, that's also a great state to be in for setting yeah. intentions and like sure, really sure. mapping out like, what are my goals? What what really in my heart of hearts is what I truly want to do and not yes. what I think I have to do, right? Yeah. It's always yeah. that, kind of, that kind of difference, that duplicity almost that Absolutely. we all have. And then the best thing to do is just to choose for what your soul tells you to do, what you want to do yeah. in your heart of hearts, because that's mm -hmm. really what's going to give you the best results, yeah. right? Yeah. And so can you explain a little bit more like when it comes to, because for people, like, again, we, we've had this yeah. conversation already, <laughs> like for many people, like healing is something that, you know, many people yeah. want to be educated on because they just don't sure. know what it is, right? Sure. Um, so can you give like a very maybe practical example of mm. something maybe a, a bit less complicated that people mm -hmm. can understand like, oh, okay, I, I yeah. see what healing does here. So uh -huh. maybe something on the level of like the day-to-day, -day, like, yeah. um, I don't know, how how certain thoughts and certain behaviors are blocking you from, from getting certain results, like yeah, where sure. that comes from, like what yeah. to do, like on a day-to-day -day basis, how healing can actually help you as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so, for example, you know, your third eye here, um, the third eye chakra that controls your imagination. So perhaps if, you're, if, you're, if your imagination feels blocked, that's an indication that you have, you know, a blockage or an imbalance in your third eye. So therefore, you need to do some kind of energy healing to, you know, reverse that. Um, your sacral chakra is a very important one. So your sacral chakra... Um, basically governs your career, work and finances and also your creativity. So for musicians and creatives, that's a huge one. So if you're having like a creative block or you have a block surrounding money, again, that suggests that you have an issue with your sacral chakra. Um, also, you've got negative thought forms that you could have just hanging around in your energy field. So Maybe if you don't think that you're negative in particular, perhaps you've grown up in an environment whereby your parents are just telling you, you know, that maybe you'll never amount to anything, um, or you've grown up with a lack mindset. So maybe if you didn't have enough money, so therefore you're just programmed basically that, um, you know, I never have enough, I never have enough money. So basically that programming will be in the sacred chakra. So again, that needs to be effaced and then reprogram basically um, so yeah different chakras control you know different things with regards to our emotions and our behavior um, and again things like anxiety and fear they can be housed in one or more chakras so mm -hmm. again things like depression that can be like your base chakra or your crown chakra um, and to do with the ego also another thing that affects entertainers is addictions so yeah. addictions would be an issue with your sacral chakra also so you know if you have anything along those lines then basically healing can help massively um, another thing with healing um, is that unlike other therapies you only well you don't need to keep going back you know week in week out indefinitely having more and more more and more sessions um, depending on what the issue is Normally three to five sessions is generally enough for most situations, but even one or two might correct the issue. So yeah, it's, it's good to have healing, you know, maybe a few times a year just to remove any, you know, energetic debris that, that might be there. Because another thing is that, you know, we always take care of our physical body every day. You know, we have a shower, we make sure that we're clean. Um, but because we eat, <laughs> we eat exactly, <laughs> but because um, there's never any dialogue or mention about the energetic body and the spiritual body, people, you know, pay it no regard. But basically, it's the most important 
shell is the most important part of you. Um, mm -hmm. So that needs to be cleansed and kept replenished, basically. So essentially speaking, if you're not taking care of your energetic body, it's a bit like putting clean clothes on a dirty body. So yeah, you wake up, you shower, you put your clothes on, but you know, your energetic body could be a whole mess. Mm. Yeah, I know for me, I go to my healer once a year. Yeah. And she will usually tell me like, okay, now you don't have to come back this year. Or she will say <laughs> like, hmm, maybe come back in four months and then we'll yeah. see. <laughs> yeah. So she will usually kind of like yeah. figure out what, whatever is there. Um, okay. But so, yeah, I think what I really like personally about healing is that what you said about like, just really having that that cleanse that yeah that deep relaxation and also sure. that kind of maintaining yourself it's kind of like yeah. almost like you would only go to the doctor when you're really really sick, sick. yeah instead yeah. of going to your doctor once a year um getting yes. your blood checked your, your yeah. blood work done and just kind of maintaining that right sure, like it's, sure. it's really kind of maintaining the vehicle that you have your body yeah. your energetic body yeah it's well it's the same with healing right like sure it's, it, it's preventative basically yeah. so mm -hmm. um if you are using healing in that sense as i mentioned at the beginning so disease begins in you know the energy field and in yeah. the chakras in the first instance so if you are having periodic healing then basically you know you could be clearing away disease before yeah. it has a chance to manifest in the physical yeah because once it's already in the physical you yeah. know that it's been lingering for a very long time a while. already yes. and chances Absolutely. are if you really trace it back you yeah. will really trace it back months away in the past sure you know sure. I, I know for me that's been my experience at least and once I really started to take care of my my energy, my energy yeah. levels, my just kind of balancing everything out, mm -hmm. I I realized like, oh wow, I haven't had to go to my doctor in like two years or three yes. years. I yeah. mean, I did go every year just to do some uh -huh. blood work, but nothing like everything just really kept going up and up yeah. in terms of physical health. <laughs> Um, and then what I also learned to do over the years is, and I also teach that to my clients is body yeah. awareness, you know, mm -hmm, learning mm -hmm. to locate where your emotions are in your body. Yes. Yeah. That's al already a great indicator of what's going sure. on. And Absolutely. Then you, you get to get the support that you feel like you need, or at least be able to clearly communicate like, mm, yeah. I've been feeling something like here in my body or it's yeah. place there. I don't really yeah. know what's going on, but then at yeah. least when you go to your healer, you know, uh -huh. they can really figure out like, oh, okay, that's exactly. already giving me a good indicator. Yes. My healer usually does like a full body scan because I like that. But I, yeah. I usually also go to her with some indicator, like tomorrow I'm going to go to acupuncture because I've nice. had headaches for two months Yeah. Um, on and off. And I'm like, eh, mm -hmm. you know, like I need, yeah. to, I need to have that checked. Um, so at least I can tell her now, like, okay, I've been having headaches on and off for two months. Like, yeah. My doctor has told me this, like my chiropractor told me that, told me like, that. what do yeah. you think, you know? So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's really is something that I feel like, mm. um, also needs a lot more edu education is definitely yeah. the body awareness. Where are my, my emotions located? Sure. Sure. Um, because your body speaks to you. So by the time yeah. You are getting symptoms. That's your body talking to you, yeah. basically, that, you know, help me. You need to do something. Mm. Mm, definitely. For sure. And so really practically speaking, when people yeah. come to you, mm -hmm. um, what is kind of like the process? Like, let's say I'm coming to you and I'm like, Julie, I'm having yeah. like these headaches for two months. Like, uh -huh. you know, I don't know what's going on. Like, help yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> so the process is, well, basically you turn up, I do the healing. Um, if it is a case of headaches, then I would expect that to be resolved in one session. Mm -hmm. um, so basically the healing will just, as I say, it goes to the root cause and it will erase whatever is causing that problem. Um, so headaches could be an issue with your crown chakra, just an imbalance there. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we would look also as to the, what I do with my clients is I also give them the emotion behind the illness. So Again, in most cases, um, it's always a buildup of emotions that create the disease. So even if it's um, like an emotion or a trauma that you had in childhood, it could be laying dormant and then suddenly in your 30s, it pops up and then you have an ailment. Mm -hmm. um, but there is always an emotion behind it. So I always give people the emotion behind it so that they can be mindful of that, mindful of their thoughts, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And then from there on, what do you advise people to do like after the session or there are certain mm. things that you advise them to do? Yeah, sure. Um, it, it varies on the person, but obviously you need to maintain your energetic health. So it depends, it depends on how people want to do that. So in terms of maintaining your energetic balance, you can obviously do meditation. That's fantastic. So meditation energetically just raises your vibration really high. And um, basically on a cellular level, when your vibration is very high, then you know you won't get disease. So your immune system will also be high. Um, if you're like in a state of fear or panic, anything of a negative um, connotation, then your immune system drops basically and your vibration drops. So um, meditation is fantastic. Um, also, people might want to work with crystals. Um, another thing that I try to educate people on is energy management, and that's managing their energy field, um, mm -hmm. which, we've, which we've just spoken about a little bit. So with cleansing. Um, so not only cleansing your energy field, but you have to protect because there's lots of stuff floating about in the atmosphere that you don't really want to pick up. But not, a, not only that, um, it's protecting yourself from other people's energy. Other people, um, as I'm sure you've met, some people can be energy vampires. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, some people just really drain you, suck your energy. You have to be protected against that. You know, sometimes if someone with, you know, if someone's not a great person, the minute that they walk into that room, you know, you can feel the energy change. So, you know, you have to protect your space. You have to protect your energy um, from all of this. So I always educate people on energy management as well. That's a very, very important one. Yeah. And what are some of the like modalities or tools that you give them for energy management? I know for me, it's yeah. well, definitely meditation, but it's yeah. also, yeah. you know, certain visualization exercises. Uh -huh. Like I love doing some uh, exercises around, like imagine that you're wearing clothes, yeah. <laughs> you know, good yes. about the energy in the room, like just yeah. kind of visualize yourself, like closing your cloak sure. or like putting, putting yeah. like the hood over your head or something like that. Like those are things sure. I like to do. Okay. So as you've mentioned that, so the, most important thing is grounding. You have to be grounded. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're not grounded, obviously you're gonna be the opposite. You might be very clumsy. Um, your thoughts are very scattered. You know, you're not gonna be able to think clearly. So you need to be grounded. Um, so in order to be grounded, that's pretty simple. You can just go outside and just, um, you know, spend time in nature, walk barefoot on the ground, just absorb the Earth's energy. Um, some people, if you are, um, well, not even if you go outside, if you just con consciously um, make a point of grounding. So even if you're in your living room now, basically, you know, if you just stand or sit, just imagine that you're drawing energy up from the earth and then through your feet and then legs and then just let it travel up. So, yeah, if you just spend like a minute or two doing that, um, you know, two or three times a day, you know, you are drawing that energy in and that really helps. It helps to really stabilize you. Um, so grounding is fantastic. Also, a big one for me is spiritual baths or herb baths. So um, again, it's just about cleansing the energy field. So at, the, at a very basic level, you can just take a salt bath. Um, and what that does is negate all of the negative energy within your energy field, basically, and just rebalance it. Um, but if you're taking a salt bath, then I would use a kilo of salt per bath. Um, but you can also use herbs. So herbs are not just for culinary experiences in the kitchen. Um, so herbs are great. Um, as an example, rosemary is fantastic for clearing the head. So if your head is feeling really bogged down, you can't think straight, rosemary is good for clarity of mind. Um, also sage. Um, love sage yeah peppermint and mint are good for your money um sorry peppermint and thyme are good for your money so thyme helps your money to grow mm -hmm. um peppermint protects your money um so yeah with herbs there's loads loads you can use so um for a herb bath you would take maybe like a spoon of different herbs um and then yeah just sit in a bathtub with some stuff um, or you can make it pretty. Some people use, you know, flower petals and whatever. But yeah, um, herb baths, spiritual baths are highly, highly effective.
Yeah, I I love taking those. I do it at least yeah. once a week or just yeah. really whenever I feel like it. Sometimes I do it every day if I'm like, I just need to do this right now. You Absolutely. Know? Absolutely. And I think this is also a huge one. Um, you've already touched upon that. Um, really listening to your intuition and really tapping yeah. into that a lot more yeah. and really listening to what you feel you need and mm -hmm. not what you think you should do. Because yes. <laughs> I really see that all the time with my clients where yeah. they just get stuck because they do what they think they have to do and they abide by all yeah. of these quote unquote rules okay. that are floating around, but that are mm. actually like, if you really think about it, that aren't really true. We yes. just made, made them up, right? Yeah. And then Again, some, it, mm. somehow like a whole community or a whole industry um, is picking up on them. And then everybody's sure. like, well, everybody's doing it. So I have to do it too. Sure. But uh, again, I guess that goes back to kind of like being in the alpha brain state. Mm. Um, and I guess the analogy that I use just in general to kind of like explain healing and just kind of like manifestation is that if you imagine the human body is a computer, your brain would be the processor. Um, your chakras will be the hard drives. And basically in order and basic well and outside of that you've got the universal energy so if you can if you can connect with the universal energy um, that's when you see a better flow in your life basically that's when you'll see synchronicity start to happen so in order to connect with that energy you need to like a computer you need to power up so you power up by using meditation that raises your vibration and when you're connected to that universal energy, um, yeah, that's when you're going to see a lot of synchronicities start to happen. Um, and as I say, manifestation. So if you're sending out, you know, orders for things to come to you, like I need more work, I need more work, then yeah, you need to do it in that process, basically, in order to connect to that energy and then for that to come back to you. So the universal energy basically is like a computer network. You're the computer and the energy in the universe is the network yeah yeah that totally makes sense i also like what you said about manifestation because mm. um that's something that for me in my practice uh, as personally and with my clients yeah is i always like to compare it with um you know how you sometimes order things online and you get yeah. really specific about like i don't know like this is um i don't know you're buying new gear and you want yes. it you want to use it for for music production you sure. be really specific you get specific on the brand what it needs yes. for you you can yeah. already completely imagine what yeah. that synth will look like in your studio all yeah. the music you will be able to make with it you're already feeling excited and you have already claimed it as yours right yes and yeah. then all the only thing that you have left to do is just like put in your payment details your address sure. make sure it arrives you know, at your home or uh -huh. wherever you want to send it to. And then all you have to do is just like sit back and let it come to you. And then yeah. when the delivery guy comes and <laughs> rings the doorbell, you just have to like open your arms, hey. and, you know, like it's here. <laughs> take it. And once it arrives, it's like, well, of course I have this scent. Like this is yes. so normal. Like it, it, I already claimed it. I already chose it. I already decided uh -huh. it was mine. Yep. I just kind of had to wait until it was arriving and I didn't Absolutely. Really know how or which yeah. delivery guy was going to do it or I wasn't nope. stressing or obsessing over like, is it going to be DHL or maybe B posts or whatever, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it's kind of the same with, with manifestation and with like yep. putting goals out there and mm -hmm. maintaining your energy in the meantime, same yes. state, claiming it as yours, like yeah. knowing that, you know, it, it's, it's yours already and yeah confidence and that trust and that mm -hmm. clarity around that and in the meantime all you need to do is just really maintain yourself and your energy and absolutely stay mindful of that right so yeah that when absolutely. it actually shows up you're like completely ready and like open yeah. to receive and enthused and happy and like yeah. yes i can finally start working with it now you know yeah. now that it's actually manifested itself into my reality sure yeah so basically um we don't really need to know how it works as long as it works we don't care as long as it works yeah. but you send your order out and basically it comes back but one thing to point out is that if you do have any blocks within your energy field it's not going to work. So mm -hmm. if you are trying to manifest and it's not working, that could indicate that there is a block somewhere that needs to be cleared, especially mm -hmm. to do with work finances and money. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's that could be a topic for a whole yeah. different show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, just to kind of round up, where mm -hmm. can 
you and um, yeah, what are the different ways they can work with you? Um, in terms of the, the actual therapy you mean or? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, well, at the, okay, so well, at the moment um, we're in lockdown. So healing can also be sent remotely. Okay. which freaks people out um, but distant healing is a thing and it works so it works exactly the same as when a client is here with me in the same room it's just as powerful there is no reduction in its efficacy so distant healing actually when I do it is probably stronger I would say um, so I like doing distant healing um, and in general I guess another important thing to mention uh, all healers are different because basically anyone can learn to heal. Um, we all have an ability, um, but obviously some people will be more gifted than others. Um, but when it comes to healing, doo -doo -doo -doo, with me, I'd say people normally see results within two to, well, I quote two to three weeks, basically. Within two to three weeks, you, you should see some movements or something happening. Um, but obviously it, things will vary. Results will vary from healer to healer. Uh, we all have a different style and we all carry a different energy. Anyone can learn to heal. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. And so how can people reach you? Where can they find you? Website, Instagram, uh -huh. throw it all yep. out so, <laughs> Throw it all out there. So the business name is Rebel Alchemy. Um, so on Instagram, it's at Rebel Alchemy Hackney um, and on Facebook also. Um, the same and website is www.rebelalchemy.net. Awesome. <laughs> this was so, so informative and so interesting. Thank you so much, Julie. You're is there welcome. anything else that you wanted to share before we go? Uh, I hope we've covered everything. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. I was just going to say as well, just going back to your comments about how can it be used for everyday things. So again, um, I can't say that this is typical of all healers, um, but sh for sure, um, you know, my clients experience this. So I would always ask people, you know, what do you want me to work on today? So even if you come to me with a physical issue, like, I don't know, you've got a bad back, um, I'll ask you, what else do you want me to concentrate on? So I don't know, maybe if you're having issues in your relationship with your partner, um, maybe you've just lost your job, you know, mm. I like people to give me a list. Yeah. Um, and basically I'll focus on all of those things. So it doesn't need to be once a friend even says to me, Julie, I'm eating too much. Can you help me to eat less? And I'm like, I'll try. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> sure. that's what I, yeah, that's what I focused on in the session. And apparently in the next few weeks after, yeah, her appetite had been suppressed. So yeah, it, it can tackle anything. So if it's again about trying to remove blocks surrounding your career, you need more work, um, or you just want to be more creative, just, yeah, it can unlock anything and everything. Yeah. So basically when people come to you, when they go to your website, they can just book in a session with you and they can say, yep. Hey, Julie, I am the world's worst procrastinator. I want to <laughs> help me. And oh, by the way, I'm also not feeling very well in my lower back. And maybe my relationship with my mother is a little bit strained. So there's yes. <laughs> and the cat and the cat is sick. Yeah. Yeah. We can also do animal healing as well. We do awesome. that. <laughs> oh, that's really yeah. awesome. Okay. That's good to know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Julie. This is really so much fun. And thank you, um, yeah, I will talk to you very soon. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, my darling. <laughs> thank you.